Melissa Giramonte here with a new FemTV mini-sode. There's nothing I love more than discovering a new series and finding myself swept up in a mystery that I can't tear myself away from. That happened to me recently with the show Home Before Dark. The story centers on Hildy Lisko, a young girl from Brooklyn, New York, who moves with her family to Erie Harbor, which is her father's small hometown in Washington State. Already an intrepid reporter with her own online newspaper, Hildy discovers an unsolved mystery that's haunted the town for decades and begins uncovering clues about what really happened. I am so excited to welcome Home Before Dark creator and executive producer Dana Fox, as well as the star of the series, Brooklyn Prince, to the podcast. They tease a bit about the new episodes and some of the challenges Hildy is facing as she takes on a new mystery. First up is Dana, followed by Brooklyn. If you haven't seen the first season of Home Before Dark, you can watch it all now on Apple TV Plus and season two premieres today, June 11th. This is a FemTV mini-sode with Home Before Dark's Dana Fox and Brooklyn Prince. So I was a bit of a latecomer to this series, and I watched the entire season in a day. And I'm obsessed with it. I love you, Melissa. That's so amazing. Thank you. I am living out my Nancy Drew, Veronica Mars slash young journalist dreams through this show. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I'm so happy to hear that. And I love that you binged it and couldn't stop. That makes me so happy. <laughs> it was like, I'm not going to bed until this is done. <laughs> so I'm oh, sitting in I the dark it. watching it all. <laughs> well, thank you for spreading the word about the show. I mean, I'm so happy that people, when they start watching it, they're sort of like, oh my God, now I can't stop. And it's five in the morning and I'm a crazy person. I just love it. It makes me so happy. <laughs> it, yeah. It's such a great show. And oh, the thank you. Thing- that I'm super curious about with this second season is how Hildy is going to be dealing with like the repercussions of, you know, sort of solving the case that she was on in the first season, but still being haunted by those lingering threads like where's Richie Fife? So can you talk about how you're weaving that aspect into the new storyline for the season? Yes. I mean, I'm going to try to do it without spoilers, but I will say that I was always really excited about how much I wanted to know what happened to Richie Fife. So it was always a dream of mine to sort of get people to come back for season two. And, you know, as a viewer of television, I find that when I get addicted to a TV show and I come back for the second season and then they change like literally everything, I go, but I loved it. That's why I wanted to watch more of some of that. So I wanted to make sure that the second season had the answers that were juicy and surprising to those remaining questions that you might still have out of that season one mystery, but that actually she is sort of solving a new mystery at the same time and that we're weaving those stories together in a way that's interesting and surprising. Um, That was always the goal. And it was really hard, if I'm honest, Melissa, because, you know, you want to do things that people have never seen before. You want it to feel compelling. You want it to feel like the plot is twisting and turning. But at the same time, you really want to care about these characters because if you don't care about the characters and you don't care about why they care about the mystery, you don't care about the mystery. So we always knew that people cared deeply about Richie Fife. Matt had a history of what happened to him when he was a little kid. Hildy cares about Richie Fife, but we were really challenged to now figure out, okay, how do we make people care about other stories in this world so that they can see that the world is bigger? And that was partly because we really wanted the show to grow up with Hildy. We want the show to feel bigger and to get to feel more intense. As Hildy grows up, we wanted it to grow up with her. And there's one thing of the, because I forced myself not to watch all of season two yet because I don't want it to be over. So I love you. (laughs) Of the episodes I've seen, there's one thing that's noticeable, and I don't think that this is really a spoiler, but showing more of Hildy's vulnerabilities and fears, which, you know, she had, she was very stoic in the first season. She's kind of like a super girl in a lot of respects. And there's a comment, if I can refer to it, where her parents are like, you know, we were starting to worry, maybe she's a sociopath, you know, <laughs> totally. and I just, I love how they, I love how you've managed to incorporate, she is still a young girl, and she has feelings and not detracting from the fact that she is a badass. 
Yeah. And I think it's so important. And it's also reflective of not only the real Hildy, who is also growing up and realizing that sometimes when you're so dead set focused on the truth and everything is black and white, you miss these emotional nuances. If you're constantly trying to push your emotions away because you think that's the only way to tell a good story, sometimes the story is emotional and that if you can't get in touch with those emotions, you can't actually solve it. So that was something that I was excited to talk about because to be honest with you, I feel like that's been my journey journey in my career, which is that in the beginning, when I first started out, I thought that to be a boss was to act like men and it was to be strong and to never cry and to be so solid and to be like truth and logic and da da da. And I was like, that's just not who I am. I'm a person who I'm really passionate. And when I love something or feel strongly about something, I cry. And so I thought to myself, why are we making that a bad thing? Why are we showing girls and men and women and all the people that watch this show, because adults watch this show just as much as kids do, why are we showing people that it's not okay to be emotional, that that being a girl and liking girly things is somehow antithetical to being a boss lady, or that crying makes you not powerful. Why? It's only because it's always been that way. And so there was something really freeing and interesting about letting Hildy, as you say, have those moments of doubt, having her question her ability a little bit and having her say like, I don't know if I can do this. It felt very emotional. And then of course, we had the pandemic hit in the middle of the season. And every single one of those moments that we had sort of planned or that we had already shot felt even more deep and more emotional because you're you're essentially watching someone reveal that like this is hard and I'm hurting and I think it's at a time when America and the world was experiencing something very hard and people were hurting and so to sort of have our show be able to say you can still be a badass you can still be an awesome mystery and you can have emotion and you can c- care about a young girl character just as much as you care about a uh, adult male character or a young boy character is just something i'm just proud to put out in the world that's amazing and there's one friendship that has kind of blossomed over the course of the first season and that's kim and bridget i oh, cannot yay. get enough of them two together you um, know they're real they're real best friends in real life <laughs> They That's like really amazing. love each other. They were best friends before the show. We like met Joelle through our incredible Abby. Like we were like, wait, who's this wonderful creature? So we, it's been so great to that you get that vibe from them. I love that. Yeah, I, I was just curious, like, are we going to get more moments with them together? Because the first couple of episodes kind of set something big up in a way. And I'm not sure how much you'll be able to get into that. Yeah. I mean, I think we love seeing them together. It's always really, really interesting and it's really fun. And I think, again, I was sort of loved the idea that we believe this world is completely real. Like I commit to my characters 100%. I'm like, they're real people. They're totally real. They live in the world. They're real. So for me, I thought it was so interesting that Matt basically had an ex-girlfriend in his life that all of a sudden his wife is like, I mean, she's kind of amazing. You know, I'm a lover of other women and I don't believe that we have to all be jealous of each other and fight over the same, you know, scraps. I'm much more about like, let's all help each other out and let's empower each other and bring each other up and lift each other up and put our arms around each other. So I kind of wanted to show that female friendship developing despite the fact that, you know, originally that was her husband's (laughs) ex-girlfriend. I think that's a great place to end our chat. Thank you so much for oh, taking the time. You, and I, I so appreciate wait. you being here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Can't wait to hear what you think about the rest of the season. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I will let you know. Okay, awesome. Yay. I'll talk to Bye-bye. you soon. Bye. Hello, Brooklyn. Hi, Melissa. My goodness, can I just say how floored I was by your performance in the first season of this show. You are so fantastic. (laughs) Thank you so much. There are so many dimensions to this character and the little nuances, the way that you play those are just fantastic. So I just had to get that out there first. For season two, how is Hildy dealing with, you know, last season's case was solved to a certain extent, but there's some lingering questions. So how does that affect Hildy going forward? Like, is she ready to let go? Or is she making sure like, she won't stop until she solves everything? She won't stop until she solves everything. She literally wants to solve the mystery of the world. (laughs) <laughs> she, <laughs> she she will not let go of the Richie Five case. She will not let go of any case that she hasn't finished. She I think there's a certain ex- 
there's a certain extent, but for Richie Fife, it's personal to her and her family, and she's grown attached to Richie even though she hasn't met him. So I, I think that she feels like she needs to solve this so the town and her family can get closure, so they can move forward in their life. Of the season, the episodes I've seen of season two so far, I really like how Hildy is showing more fear and vulnerability. Did you enjoy getting to explore that part of the character? Yeah, you with Hildy, I I was I was reading the first few episodes and I saw I saw that in her and I really liked it. I mean, you you see Hildy as this this person who is fearless. But then you actually see her and instead of being like, oh, she has fear. I don't like her. You're like, you actually feel bad for her. You see a kid side of her that, you know, she she might be taking on the world, but she still has feelings and emotions and all these things going in her life. And as an actress playing a character, it's always nice to see new things that you can add to your character and that you can experiment with. Yeah, that is really, really cool. There's one thing that's a little bit concerning in what I've watched so far. Trip has a new job, but there's almost like a wall that she's put up because of her new responsibilities. Does that make things trickier for Hildy when she's chasing down leads this season? Yes, it does. She she loves Trip. Her and Trip have a relationship that's not just a source. I think it hurts Hildy as much as Trip not talking to her, but I think also it's really hard because she would always go to Trip. She'd be like, hey, get me the scoop on blah, 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 blah. And Trip would always get it for her. Now she has to go find it herself, has to go hunt down like the bare bone lead to get it. Um, but I think part of her understands why Trip is doing it because Trip has all that pressure on her and, you know, all that responsibility after coming, <laughs> coming in after a guy who literally told lies and did the opposite of the truth. There's one relationship that I love that's being explored more this season, and that's between Hildy and her pop pop. It's there's just something really, really beautiful about that. So was that something that you really enjoyed, like getting to explore that relationship further this season? Yeah, I mean, I loved all the scenes with with Hil Hildy and Pop Pop, and I love Reed, who plays Pop Pop. He's so flipping good. <laughs> That it's just it's so it's so easy to work with him. Uh, you have that automatic click relationship, and for me, I have that ex almost the exact same relationship with my grandma. So Pop Pop and Hildy's relationship is one of the few relationships that I could just click into, and that was almost like a ding. I think it's really nice because you see Hildy always being like, "You did that. You did that. You told a lie. You told a lie," and then. With Pop Pop, it's like a judgment-free zone where she can load off and she can, you know, take care of Pop Pop. And she has someone that will hold her, even if she's being she's being stubborn at times. In the first season, Hildy seemed really, you know, she was used to this exciting life in Brooklyn in a big place um, and then had to adjust to this small town living where everyone knows everybody else's business. Does Erie yeah. Harbor start to feel like a home to Hildy this season or is she still kind of hoping that she gets to go back to her real home soon? I think she's kind of noticed that she's not going back. I think she wants to stay in Erie Harbor for her grandfather because she doesn't want to be apart from him, especially with his Alzheimer's. And I think she's starting to like the town. I think she has a lot of stories in the town that she can uncover and that um, she can do it. I think she believes that she can make the town better and that she can make the town free of its traumatized past and, and its traumatized present. I, so I think she's starting to feel kind of at home and in the house she's in and with the people she in the town. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. I'm going to go watch the rest of season two right now because I don't know if I can wait. <laughs> go do it, girl. Go do it. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I can't wait to see everything that will come to you in your career because of this beautiful performance. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you.
FemTV is produced by me, Melissa Giramonti, and Mike Garcia of Permanent Record Studios in Austin, Texas. Never miss an episode. Subscribe, rate, and review FemTV at Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Find us on social media. We're at FemTV Podcast on Twitter and Instagram and at Facebook.com slash FemTV Podcast. FemTV is exclusively listener supported. Become a patron today at Patreon.com slash FemTV. And for more about the show, visit FemTV Podcast. I'm Melissa Giramonti. Thank you for listening.